Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a El Clasico replay between Good vs Evil, Gondor vs Isengard on the beautiful map Vaults of Anduin for Battle for Middle Earth 2 in the HD edition on the patch 1.9 version 2.0. Before further ado, let's get it started. On the left side of the map we have the White, man of the West player Archangel, who is one of the BFME 2 experts by the way. He is facing against the Red, Isengard player Lothlorien on the right side. Once again, this is the beautiful map Falls of Anduin, which is a reskin for the map Falls of Isen. Two furnaces coming up for the Isengard player. And we have a farm coming up for the man of the West player defensively around the fortress. And the second builder from the man of the West player, I'm assuming he's going to build a offensive barracks potentially, even though I can't see him in the minimap. Kribane is being used from the Isengard player to scout the area, just to see what's going on, on the opposite side of the map. And again, I can't see the second builder for whatever reason. Oh, there he is. He's building actually a barracks next to the Vork layer at the top side, kinda defensively. I was expecting a, a barracks maybe around this area, but that's not being the case. The builder from Isengard is moving to the top right side, scouting the area for a potential offensive barracks from the Man of the West player. Two furnaces into the Uruk pit is gonna be his own build order for the mighty Urukai. And remember, Urukai are the best looking swordsmen in the universe of Middle Earth. They are also a bit cheaper in compared to the Urukai of the Rise of the Witch King. Actually, significantly cheaper. The Urukai in, in Rise of the Witch King they cost 400 each, and this ones from BFME 2 they cost only 300 each. On the other side, Barax is up on the field, he's gonna recruit some tower guards, because that's the only possible pikeman choice for Man of the West in BFME 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King. And he's gonna use... Look what's gonna happen now, the Vork layer is a bit more challenging, you can see that, right? The Vorks are able to trample down even the tower guards. But of course, tower guards are a hard counter to the Vorks, and this is the reason why they're gonna be one-shotting the Vorks in no time. The creep is gonna be secured. Uh, by the tower guards, you can hit level 2 after this one and also get a money boost, which is always nice. In the meantime, he was also using the human wood offensively, just to see what's going on on the opposite side of the, of the map. He's able to see the furnaces, he's able to see the Uruk pit, and I'm assuming he was even able to see the Urukai, as they are leading to the bottom right side of the map. Okay, tower guards level 2, moving on. They might potentially creep the troll layer at the top right side of the map, that's a possible choice. And again, the creeps in BFME 2, when you compare this with the rise of the Witch King, are a lot more challenging. And I like that, personally. Because I don't like the idea of every unit being able to creep a Vork layer, for example. Even Orcs are able to do that. And I, for myself, I'm a BFME 1 player. And in BFME 1, the creeps are also really challenging. For example, a troll layer can't be even creeped with, uh, with a hero like Theorin or Eome or Eowyn or... Um, you know, <clears throat> Lourdes can't even creep the layer without carnage, without his own sword, uh, without being from, you know, shooting from a, from a far distance. The builders are also way tankier in this game, but for that reason the wall hubs are also way more expensive, because uh, remember, right, uh, when you are watching BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King, you can see the builders are building most of the time wall hubs to get in safety. That's not gonna be seen that much in BFME 2. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking, because once again, the wall ups are really expensive and you can't build them every single time, that's not possible. The farm has been taken down, the Urukai are fast enough to get away from the situation, the archers are gonna be able to deal some damage, but I'm assuming he will be able to save at least one of these units. However, Isengard, uh, little to no sustain, uh, even though you can build the House of Healing, I believe in the fortress of Isengard, that's gonna give you sustain around the fortress for the nearby allied units. Crossbowmen are able to defend themselves against the soldiers. There is a tower guard level 2. He wasn't able to creep the troll layer with this one, but he was able to creep them with this one. They are level 3 now. Uh, the man of the West player Archangel is focusing a bit more on creeping, while Isengard player is focusing a bit more on defending and also going for harassment. Tower guards are dying quite fast, getting countered by the swordmen, getting countered by the archers. So they can't get out from this situation. Vork pit on the fields now, Vork riders are the only choice from the Vork pit for Isengard in BFME 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, in which you are also able to recruit some Vork packs. This one should not be a big deal for Man of the West. He has almost 4 power points collected now, 450 command points available. And I've been asked many, many times, why are you focusing on the command points and not on the eco? Because eco and command points in BFME games are going hand by hand, you know? The, oh, unlike in BFME 1, in which your command points are set. But every resource building you are building is increasing your command points by 50 when they are level 1, by 75 when they are level 2, and by 100 when they are level 3. 
long story short, the player who has more command points available will of course have also more resource income than the opponent player. For example, Isengard right now has only 400 command points available. He has a debuff, Prebeen, which is gonna debuff any everything by the way. Not only leadership, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, but also buffs are gonna be completely negated one, you know, once you use the Krebin, which is very, very effective in my opinion. And also on top of that, the enemy units of course are losing quarter of armor and quarter of damage. The farm is getting basically bursted down in a second and a half. Isengard army is strong. And once again, we are using the shield ball, we are using the HD edition. And this way you can shield, uh, you can see the shields from the Urukai a bit better. Clumping extremely nicely. Warchant has been used for a damage boost of 50-40% damage, but Warchant here is gonna give you also movement speed, which can be actually in many situations a great adjustment. The yeah, the building level two, level one, even though it's a production building, is still gonna get bursted down in a second and a half. The farm is gonna be taken down next. There we go. And Isengard has definitely the upper hand for now. He is having the momentum in his favor. He is keeping up the pressure and offense is most of the time the best defense, as you guys know. And he's able to deal significant amount of damage. That is Deeble, uh, level 1, into the Gondonites. The visuals are a bit bugged. Maybe it's because I'm using the HD edition. Maybe I shouldn't use the HD edition because I believe the 1.09 version 2.0, this is the patch we are using right now, is including many, many new... Um, textures which are kind of overriding the HD edition but I'm not sure maybe you guys if you guys know you can let me know in the comment section down below and also let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more BFME 2 content in the future on this channel but also my twitch channel twitch tv slash beyond standards which you should be following by now it's gonna be also in the description down below Isengard is creeping the war player, but I'm assuming the man of the west player might be able to steal at least the money there is a Lourdes who is the first hero of the game. Lourdes, of course, the most cost-efficient hero in the game. Gives you literally everything that you need. A great swordsman, you know, good from distance. Has Carnage who is making him to a, du to a du <laughs> dueling monster. Has leadership, has pillage, has crippled when enemy hero makes problems. You can just cripple him down. Look at this. He's gonna be able to get away, but Lourdes is already level 2 and that's all it needs. Carnage is already unlocked for a 100% damage boost and 20% armor boost. Okay, but Man of the West play might be able to do something. We see now some Galadrim warriors on the field, Elven warriors they are called here. They are, you know, Man of the West play is able to recruit them from the inn. He was capturing after creeping the troll layer earlier. They cost 400 each, just like in Rise of the Witch King. And those are like the Elven warriors from the Rohan faction in BFME 1. Because they are able to fight with swords and also bows, which is nice because when it comes to deal damage to units, you can always choose to be the archer battalion you need and keep your distance. But when it comes to harass the enemy buildings, you can always throw your swords and deal significant amount of you know damage to the buildings. Okay, Lord is uh, having a hard time. He wasn't using the carnage, that's why. He's gonna get level 4 after this one, that's gonna unlock once again the cripple ability, level 5 is needed for the leadership, which is gonna give you the damage boost, 50% damage and 25% more combat experience. But the leadership things uh, for BFME 2 on the patch 1.9 version 2.0 is like a full video of its own, you know? The leadership is completely different from what we have seen in BFME 1 and in uh, Rise of the Witch King so far. It's really interesting how the leadership is working, and how you are able to stack some individual of uh, leaderships, for example, damage, armor inspiring, armor leadership, high tier leadership, all these leaderships are quite unique, and you are able to stack them all with each other, as long as they are not named exactly the same. You can't have two, da two times damage leadership, you can't have two times high tier leadership, that's not possible, but you can have damage leadership, armor leadership, and high tier leadership combined, and that's gonna give you a significant boost of damage, armor, but also combat experience. Lourdes is level 4, he's healing up over time. Isengard is creeping, I believe, the last remaining layer on the map, Forts of Anduin, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there are no more creeps left beside this one. And if Lourdes gets the last hit on this layer, he will be really close to level 5. Once again, leadership is gonna make those units hit like an absolute track. And also, they're gonna level up 25% faster, which is also nice. In the meantime, we have double Uruk Pits, both of them are level 1, and also one Warg Pits level 1. So we have a great mix of infantry units, Urukai, Crossbowmen, and also cavalry units, in this case those Warg Riders. 
8 power points collected, 600 command points available after the creep in in Warchant. Boromir, he's like in a movie, crippled down from Lourdes. There is no escape. Lourdes can always just use the sword, Carnage, and he can take, this, take down this Boromir in no time himself. And that's gonna also make him level 5, but Carnage is on cooldown now. Uh, if he gets the last hit here, he will definitely get level 5, or really close to level 5. Uh, he didn't get any experience from the kill, but that's fine. Go hit him on the field, it means his table has to be level 2. Archer range still not uh, on the field after he got uh, after it got destroyed by Isengard before. Maybe rangers could be a nice choice, maybe some heroes other than Boromir could be a nice choice. But again, we have reached a stage of the game in which heroes from Man of the West player won't have that much value anymore. As long as Lourdes is remaining on the field, any hero you recruit will, be get, will get crippled down, will be disabled if you want to say so. And then Isengard can just choose if he wants to commit on and take down the hero or if he wants to just peel back and escape. Industry has been chosen from the spellbook, will be used on this furnace for a 300% resource boost which is great. It means even on a command points with 650, Isengard will not have any money problems as long as Industry is active. Trust me on that one. On the other side, 650 command points also available for Archangel, the man of the West player. He has 13 power points collected after the Elven Wood, which is available, but he is not using it just yet. The furnace is getting demolished, Lourdes is trying to get the, some ex the little bit amount of experience he needs to unlock the leadership to make the surrounding units, the nearby allied units around him, just much, much stronger. I, I hear Boromir, he's back in the business, he's level 2 only, just like Lourdes, he also has to be level 5, and just like Lourdes, he also offers you damage leadership. Level 3 for the Horn of Gondor for the stun, which can be quite nice. And no pikemen, no problem. Beautiful trample is coming with the Gondor Knights and Rohirrim just like that. 15 power points collected, that's great, that's nice. And also flanking from the bot uh, bottom right side. With Elven army, tower guards are body blocking the enemy units and Elven archers, they are also not protected. And there comes the flank from Isengard this time. Sandwich the Man of the West army, every Elven warrior is almost getting one-shotted. Tower guards are remaining, there's a Tom Bombadil special summon. Tom Bombadil in BFME 2 also offers you leadership, that's a beautiful sonic song. But the units, they have leadership, they were war chanted and they don't die that fast. Lourdes is level 6, even though war chant doesn't give you any armor leadership anymore. Unlike in um, uh, Rise of the Witch King, in which every buff is the same. It gives you always 50-50 damage armor and every leadership is the same too. It's a full different story in compared to BFME 2. Okay, uh, he's able to get... I mean, look at the Sonic song, it's reloading quite fast. I'm assuming you can even cast it three times during the time remaining of Tom Bombadil in Middle-earth after its summon. Boromir, oh, what's going on? I hear, oh my goodness, Thunder. Thunder strikes are coming. Boromir is able to duel Lords, taking his revenge from the films, but he's crippled down, and that's the power of Lords. Can he get away? Nice one. Man of the West player shouldn't overcommit. Lords is gonna get in safety, and he will be fine for now. And also Boromir is kind of in a safe spot, he is quite healthy, should be just able to run away. Um, I think he should be easily able to get away from this situation. Once again, Saruman has only Wizard Plus with level 1. And you need to be at least level 2, but once you reach level 2, leveling up Saruman is really not a hard task, guys. You can always rotate between your Wizard Plus and especially Fireball, which is a semi-range ability, which can't be missed. It's not a skill shot, it's like an on-hit. And you can use it over and over again from a safe distance. Get your Dominate unlocked with level 8, which gives you the chance to control the enemy units. And once you reach level 10 with this dude, the War of Power is just like Gandalf, insanely strong. 750 command points, 10 power points available after the Industry, Kribin and Warchant. And we have 875 command points available, but barely any units remaining on the field. And yes, almost 13 power points collected after the Human Wood and the Tom Bombadil summon. Rohirrim are gonna take care of these Corsairs, no big deal. Maybe get Elme on the field for some spot of this Gond for this Gondor Knights and Rohirrim would be a nice choice. Maybe a other hero like Gandalf, Aragorn could be a nice choice. Because I believe you will need something else than Boromir if you want to be able to deal with Saruman and Lourdes at the same time. He's still level 4 and I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, once, yeah, look at this. Uh, Resistant armor inspiring, okay? So, uh, even though he has no... arrives precisely when he means to. Oh my goodness. 
that's all about time, my friend Gandalf. And Gandalf in BFM me to compared to Rise of Twitch King is a different story, guys. Trust me on that one. If he gets a beautiful Wizard Plus, he will be level 4 in no time, and then that's gonna give him the chance to get mounted on the Shadow Fangs. Mobile, Gandalf. Is scary. It's a it's a long distance. Holy guacamole! Bombo combo, ladies and gentlemen, and booyah! Level three, just like that. He got crippled down, and that's the power of Lords once again. But he has the shield bubble to negate the damage for five seconds. Gandalf is gonna be almost immune to damage. It's a huge shield actually, but it's gone now. Maybe use lightning sword. Uh, human wood is gonna be used. I believe the cripple is almost gone. I can't see the animation around it anymore. But Gandalf is taking a lot of damage. He has no heal. Gandalf is gonna be taken down, unfortunately. And that's the power of Isengard. That's the power of Lords. By the way, he was also summoning the... Oh, nice one. He was also summoning the Rangers behind. But Saruman is still quite healthy. He has Fireball in the worst case scenario. He might be in trouble, though. He needs some reinforcements as soon as possible. But the Watcher is gonna do its war as he's being summoned underneath of this Rohirrim. Saruman is running for his life. He's a quite fast hero. For the fact that he is actually um, a hero on foot, in compared to Gandalf, he's extremely fast. Look how fast he's running. It's like uh, crazy, right? <laughs> it's like Lourdes almost. Uh, Fireball is available. Use it from a safe distance. Get him level 5 for the speechcraft. Give levels to your few. Nice one. And I like this about BFME too. You also get experience for killing summoned units. And look at this knockup from his basic attacks. I mean, the heroes here are a different story. Even though I was a huge fan of this Horn of Condo Visa Plus combination, but you can see and tell yourself, as long as Lourdes is remaining on the field, even Gandalf can't do much. He's quite limited. Gandalf is a caster, and once he's casting all his abilities, he has nothing left anymore, and he has to peel back. And Lourdes is saying, no, 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 you are not going away anywhere. You will sit there for 20, 25 to 30 seconds. I don't know how exactly the duration of the cripple is. It's about 30 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. That's, that doesn't sound crazy, but it, actually it's crazy for a squishy hero like Gandalf, who has only 5 seconds of his shield bubble, then 25 seconds you are taking damage, and you are taking a lot of damage. But he has a lot of farms around, but <laughs> Isengard player is full on command points, 1000 is the max cap, you can't have more than that. And he has also industry of course, which is being used every time when it's available on this level 3 furnaces. And again, Isengard has no money problems guys. He has Two Uruk pets, Armory now level 2 for the Forge Plates eventually, for the Heavy Armor which is already purchased. And this is gonna make this Urukai and Pikemen and even Warc Riders crazy strong. Okay, does he have Marketplace? Um, no, he has no Marketplace. Marketplace is nice in the mid to late game for Man of the West because you will just get more money, you know, from your farms, which is, I think, 15% if I'm not mistaken. But... If you have multiple farms around, and especially if you have level 3 farms around, this 15 person is quite nice. Lourdes isn't around. Oh oh And there comes Gandalf. And he's able to get mounted here with level 3 and not level 4. That, that's the wombo combo, ladies. Oh, I don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss this. Come on, come on, come on. Pew! Full level, just like that. Maybe he can kill Saruman too. He's gonna use Fireball. Oh, Lightning Sword is able to catch a lot of units. It's, you know, it deals a lot of damage if you catch only one, and you can see it's even burning down the enemy units. But Saruman is so fast. Beside Gandalf, who is mounted, nobody can catch him. But once Gandalf is level 5, he's gonna be white. And white means more damage, more tankiness, and overall lower cooldown on his abilities. Level uh, 7, the Easter Light is gonna be nice against Saruman and against Lourdes. But don't over chase, Lourdes might come any second and there he comes guys, the anti-hero himself, he's level 6 now. This is the most important ability now against heroes like Gandalf and Boromir. But don't waste it on Boromir, there is no reason Sharku is also on the field, he's level 1 yet. Uh, <laughs> look at this, he's even able to knock down the captain of Gondor. With a plus, he's surrounded from many many units, oh that's gonna be a risky situation for Gandalf, trust me on that one. Nice, but that's, that's it, you know. That's it. What can you do against such a reckless seed? You need to use the shield bubble now. Does he have heal from the spell book? Yes, he has. He's using the shield bubble. Lords is coming with the carnage. That means 100% more damage. Pretty much double the damage. Heal is gonna be used very early. But the duration of cripple is kinda insane. Am I right or not? Can he get away? I don't see the circle around Gandalf anymore. Please run for your life. Oh, he is gonna be able to get away in this situation. That's nice. Cripple has a long cooldown. If he would be level 7 by now, he could have killed this Lord, by the way, with the Easter Light, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know how much damage it actually deals. There is fire on the ground. Tom Bombadil summon is available. 
Lourdes is in a safe spot. Tom Bombadil, I think, won't be able to catch the Saruman either because, again, Saruman is so fast. We have some small fights going on. Uh, heavy armor not purchased, but Forge Fleet's purchased on this Warcriders. So he has to peel back. But is he paying attention? The answer is no, he is not paying attention. Don't feed Gandalf too much. You don't want him to get level 10. Trust me on that one. The Water of Power is insanely good on both the Wizards, Saruman and also uh, Gandalf, of course. Okay, nice harassment, level 2. His furnace is going to be taken down. Isengard is dropping down to 800 command points. But look his, look his money. Like, the fact that he has a armory level 2 with heavy armor and forge blades purchased, and that he's spamming units all the time, and still has almost every single time 2,000 plus resources, is kind of insane, in my opinion. Archangel has to make something happen. Marketplace finally on the field for the Grand Harvest. Again, 15% more money from the farms, but you need to buy the upgrades for its effect. Okay. Oh, but Saruman is quite low. He's playing with fire, literally, but maybe he's trying to beat. Nice fireball. Holy guacamole. What is this fireball? Human wood is going to be used. Lourdes is around 50% HP mark. Gandalf is afraid, and he has to be afraid, but shield bubble is back up for 5 seconds. Shield Shielding against pretty much any damage and also knockback resistant. Warchan is going to be used. Is Saruman dead? I, I don't see him on the field anymore. Did he lose him? He might have lost him, actually. No. Now that's Sharku and that's Lourdes. I think Saruman is dead, yes. But Lourdes is the real target, guys. Lourdes is the real target. Lightning Swords, nice. Against Pikemen. And even with heavy armor, they are burning very fast. Um, and that's the power of Gandalf. Once he's mounted, you have like a like an overall great hero. You know, he has no counters. Pikemen, no problem. You visa plus them and GG. You know, any other unit can also not deal with him. Uh, you need a lot to commit against Gandalf. Again, you need to work around his cooldowns. Why? Because he's a caster. His auto attacks are extremely slow. Look how, how slow how slow he's attacking compared to all the other heroes. You see that? Like, he needs one hour to attack one time with his basic attacks, which are also hurting a lot, but the attack speed is extremely slow. But Man of the West player is actually able to push him back. That's crazy. 700 command points only for Isengard. He has to revive his Saruman, of course. Boromir is healing up over time. He's level 5. Maybe Faramir could be a nice choice with the Warning Arrow against the heroes. Now, at this stage of the game, Man of the West play needs heroes to deal with the opening heroes. Like, for example, against Lourdes. Maybe Elvin, Elmer combination. Spear, Spear, Warning Arrow from Faramir. All these range abilities against a hero like Lourdes to burst him eventually down from 100 to 0. And this way you can play a bit more aggressively with your Gandalf. Other than that, if Lourdes is remaining on the field, you have to watch out. You have to respect him. If you don't, you will get crippled down and die eventually. Okay, so Barax is level 3. Stable is level 3 too. Archer range still not on the field. I cannot believe that. I believe he will need rangers with fire. Because Isengard has a lot of pikemen. So going, you know, it's like a win-win situation. You have like this amount of damage with fire against buildings too. And you are also hard countering the pikemen. But getting Rohirrim on the field, I don't know if this is the right call. He has heavy armor purchased. He has blacksmith somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. There it is, level 1. We need to get it to level 2 for the forge blades and level 3 for the iron ore. Okay, he's looking for a visa plus. There we go, beautiful. Almost level 7, guys. Almost level 7. That's gonna unlock once again the Easter Light. Warchan is gonna be used on this tiny battalion of pikemen. Should have waited for the other units to arrive, but it's okay. They have leadership because of Lourdes. Level 4, Sharku. Team the beast with level 9. Targeted cavalry units come under control from Sharku. That can be actually quite effective against the Rohirrim and Gondor Knight. Because that's kind of the main army now from the Man of the West player. Saruman is back in the business. Level almost 7. And again, level 8 can also steal. Like, steal and steal from Sharku. Double steal. Almost level 7. Almost level 7. Go for a Wizard Plus. Lourdes is coming from this area. But I believe Man of the West player is able to see that. He's going to be peeling back for now. Saruman is looking for a chance of a beautiful fireball, which, again, is one of the best abilities in the game. Let's be real, you know? From a safe distance, gives you great amount of experience, has a crazy splash damage potential, because it's like an area of effect damage. It's able to hit multiple units at the same time. Okay, do it. Level... Pew! Now, le level 7, that's nice. Where is Lourdes? Lourdes is actually at the bottom right side. Gandalf can keep going on. 
on there it is guys that's the ranger summon the second time fireball is gonna be used level 8 is needed for the dominate but he can go for juice if he's up last here and that's the plan from Saruman. there we go and almost every single ranger from the summon is gone already you need to react to this one you need to micro around but i believe he want to deal economical damage he's focusing down the level 3 furnace of industry buff on it he's gonna be able to take it down but he's actually committing a bit too much and he will be losing a lot of his gondor knights and rohirrim is it worth it maybe it is Power point wise, earthquake! There we go! Let's go! Oh, 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 Lord! Oh, he missed! Did he miss the cripple? Uh, don't commit like that. Don't commit like that. Don't do that. I don't know if he's crippled or not. I think he is crippled. Human Wood, Tom Bombadillo, he's committing fully now against the Fortress of Isengard. What a great game it is! Healies has been used. One more time, beautiful Bizaplas. Uh, he's crippled, he can't get away. Even though we couldn't see the animation around him, but he's gone. Lourdes is the killer of Gandalf. Sharku is level 4. I think Saruman is also almost level 8, yeah? All heroes from Isengard are remaining on the field. So far, he only lost his Saruman once and that's it. But look at the fortress. It's so low. He's still committing with the... He's using even rallying call. He wanna take it down no matter what. But it's not gonna be possible. Trust me on that one. There's not many units remaining and over committing is not the best choice. And that's gonna give Isengard almost the power points he needs for the for the own summon dragon. And the watch is available for a defense as well. He has to be careful though. Don't uh, be too greedy and don't leave your fortress unguarded, unprotected. It can backfire big time. Gandalf has to be revived. It means Gondo or Man of the West play in this case. Look, he has almost no units on the field. Yes, even the Ivory Tower. Upgrade on the fortress to see the entire map and also uh, you get passively movement speed for 10 seconds. Okay, that's the that's now the count, counter commitment. And he has not that much money because reviving a Gandalf level 8 is gonna cost you some cash, trust me. And even if you get him back on the field, Lourdes is coming already, almost level 10. And now you believe me, Lourdes is the most cost efficient hero in all battle for middle earth games the amount of utility power strength pe defense he offers you for the price is insane insane okay level eight it means dominate fight for me he can steal now the enemy unit enemy units which is crazy and the water power is even look at how much experience he's getting he doesn't want to commit against the fortress yet, I'm assuming, but yet I believe he has enough army and enough power to take it down. Oh, there comes this Dragon Strike. Dragon Strike is gonna take down a lot. Even the stable level 3 is getting burned down and one-shotted. He's getting so much extra money from this too. He has also healed, and that's what I like about this uh, BFME too, that also evil factions have some sort of sustain, you know? Because in BFME 1 and Rise of the Witch King, the sustain is exclusively for the good factions. And that's it, guys, I believe. Does he have anything else left? He has 400 command points, only losing the fortress means he's gonna lose the game, right? Oh, he has some barracks somewhere. Let me check where he has a barracks at. Okay, Marketplace, Blacksmith. I believe here. Yeah, he's building a barracks. In order to destroy or win your opponent, you have to make sure to kill every single barracks, archie or production buildings. I mean, that's the summary of the names. You know, units, uh, buildings where you can recruit units from. Like stable, archer range, barracks, and so on, you know? Everything, every one of them has to be destroyed for you to win. Or he gives up. This game is over. He has no money, no command points. He has 200 command points only. Um, oh, he's rebuying the fortress. That's why he has no money. I see you. Okay, he knows he can't win this. He's gonna cancel it and game over. Isengard is victorious in this beautiful El Clasico matchup, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Give me too. After a long time, I wanted to cast this. Let me know in the comment section down below if you wanna see more BFME2 videos in the future. And again, follow me please on my Twitter and Instagram because I will be on vacation starting next Thursday and I will be gone for like four weeks. I will be come back at the end of August, September and then hopefully I will be able to stream regularly again on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. Follow me there if you haven't done it yet. And I see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay Beyond Standards and keep hitting like a truck. Take care of yourselves and peace out.